Hello and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about the acro playstyle of the playstyle triangle. How you can play more aggressively in your games or how you can open games by playing aggressively and establish early control. I'm going to show you the criteria for playing acro and also the procedure. So how you execute uh, acro play and what you're looking to gain from doing so. So we're going to be taking a look at a D-Rush English opener and we're going to be taking a look at a Malian mirror where you can really see the differences between the playstyles. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe and leave a comment down below and uh, let's get into it. When you are thinking about playing aggressively, it's really important that you think about the matchups that you're playing in. Sometimes you're up against civs that are really good defending. Sometimes you're up against civs that are also very aggressive. And so playing uh, a very aggressive style can sometimes not be the most rewarding thing to do. But you have to adapt and then see for yourself what works best. There are different criteria for a successful acro play. And those are resource management. You don't want to overgather. So when you are trying to go for a early rush, you want to be as effective as possible with your resources. So here you can see I've gathered enough resources to keep constant villager production. And then I'm going to make mana arms very quickly in this game. So I'm not going to stop the villager production here. I'm going to constantly produce villages. And then I'm going to make two mana arms here. I'm not going to make more because it will delay me too much. Which is also why you have to also think about early pressure. How much pressure should you actually do? It's another one of the criteria for playing aggressively. If you apply pr pr pressure to your opponent's economy, you can gain a lot of value, but sometimes you can also overdo that. So if you go for three mana arms in this situation, maybe that third mana arm is actually not really going to be doing anything. You also want to be scouting. You want to scout immediately when you are wanting to play aggressively where your opponent's eco are, is, so you can hit that eco. If all of their resources, let's say you're playing on marshlands where most resources spawn under the TC, if you have all the resources within the town center fire range here, going for an early melee rush won't really work. Meaning if you go for mana arms and they have to close in on the TC fire, it doesn't work. So don't do that. The next thing you want to do is military production. You want to get military production out quick. So you can do this either by going for fast feudal age and get, for example, longbows out or knights. Or you can go for a dark age rush with the Mongols or with the uh, English here with the racks opening. And then you have a uh, really strong ad uh, advantage over your opponent because most people will just try to get a fast feudal. So you can, ca you can catch a lot of people off guard in that way. Um, the last thing is map control. So you want to exercise map control. That's the main goal of playing aggressively. You're never going to find an aggressive player that's not looking to gain map control. So what you want to do here is, even if you don't get to kill lots of villagers or deny lots of eco or any other, you know, boons for, for playing aggressively, you want to establish map control. And the way you do this is simply by locking people into a state of turtle playstyle, where they're forced to play more defensively and not out on the map. Meaning, if you have a man at arms coming here, he's not going to be able to move outside of his base here. He has all his deer right outside his base. And so I just killed these with my scout. And now the deer won't be under the TC. This means that when the mana arms come in here, the mana arms will actually be effectively um, make his entire food income here from the deer um, non-effective because, well, it's all outside of his TC range. And so what is he going to do? He can either make a Dark Age barracks, which is not very effective, or he can go to the uh, Feudal Age and then start making either archers or horsemen to deal with these mana arms. My goal here is to deny the deer for as long as possible because they're high gathering resources. And I also want to take out these two buildings here, the mill and the mining camp, so he can't generate tax because he is playing as the Chinese. So that is the criteria for playing aggressively here. Now we're going to speed up the game a little bit. As you can see here, the mill is going to go down. And this is, you know, all part of the early pressure. You want to disrupt the resource gathering for as long as possible. You force him to play a play style that he wouldn't normally uh, play and you're delaying his age up. So usually the Chinese would have song at around five minutes, but he's also only getting his first landmark at around five minutes. So this is already very successful to me. Now, I only made two mana arms and we're going to take a look at our base here. We're going to go for our own deer. It's high gather rate. We're going to go for council hold to continue our aggression because follow up with longbows is actually really strong. And then we are going to be going for an economic advantage here. So the goal of the rush is to go for a dark age rush opening 
Then we're going to go into Feudal Age, make a couple of longbows and some spearmen to deal with stable. And then we're going to go gather enough stone for the uh, second TC and then go into White Tower when he fast castles. Because usually the way to get out of a lock like this is to get either a tech advantage or take a good fight. So I'm expecting my opponent to uh, get to castle at some point in this game. So what we're going to do is we're going to go for a 2cc, which means we're probably going to lose some map control, but as English, it's okay, because we can make farms. And so we can quickly regain it afterwards. Here, we go for spears, men at arms, longbows. And so this is a pretty diverse comp. It's very standard, but the difference is we played from the Dark Age on, so he's already really behind. We're seven minutes into the game, and he does not have a Barbican yet. We get a couple of villager kills here. Two villager kills. And this is very good for us. Worth losing a longbow for. Also some idle time by having villagers inside the towers. What you have to watch out for when you're going for an early rush, and this can be feudal and dark age, is the opponent going for uh, run buys. So if an opponent goes for a uh, stable opening here, he's going to try to take out the longbows that are streaming towards the base. So you can see there's longbows here. And these will actually die pretty quickly to the horsemen. So this is one way that a rush can be broken. Or rather a lock on your opponent's base can be uh, broken. By going for early horsemen, they can actually do a lot of damage and force you to react to this. The way you deal with this is either by stacking units in your base and then moving out in groups. Or you go back with your main army. You don't really want to do that, but here... He's already walled up. He's played the tower. He spent a lot of resources defending. And so I'm not going to gain a lot from staying here. So now I can start moving on to the second town center. And from there, I can continue on with the game. I'm scaling and I'm going to be expanding, which is the entire goal here. Instead of just letting him play 2 c song, and then he's going to boom me. When you're playing aggro, you're doing it also to counter another playstyle, which is the boom playstyle. The boom playstyle is a more greedy playstyle where your opponent is going to go for more of an economic um, expansion or just in general an advantage. And then you're trying to punish that by playing aggressively. You want to scale as well when you play. So if you are going to play aggressively, you also have to think about how am I actually going to finish this game? So the way you do this is by maintaining control of the map so map control is important then you want to get a military advantage and you want to take smart engagements and then keep up your momentum throughout the game so by playing very aggressively meaning you get some units out really quickly at least quicker than your opponent and then applying pressure the focus is going to be in your opponent's base meaning that you can do whatever you want to in your own base meaning you can add a second tc in this case with the marlins you can add pit mines you can maybe add in trade if you're playing mongols with silver tree so there's lots of stuff you can do if you're going to go for an early rush. Aggro play is not only rushing, it's also taking smart engagements and then exposing your opponent's weak points. Here, in this game, it's a Malian Mirror. Malian Mirror matchups are tricky, but most of the time it's about uh, Warrior Scouts, who is the most aggressive, and then where the focus is on the game. If you're playing defensively, then it's not good. But if you're playing aggressively, then it's great because you're forcing your opponent to play defensively. So one has to take the role of, a, of another. So here we're going to go for a stable opening. We have Mantle Quarry up on gold. This gives us, us a really nice gold income for upgrades. Then we're going to go for a stable. And then we're just going to mass produce Warrior Scouts. So you can see we have five Warrior Scouts. He's not going to go for a stable. He's trying to go for an eco advantage. So he's trying to set up early cows. Going for the uh, two mill opener. And then into cattle ranch. He's not expecting me to do any aggressive here. Um, so that's probably more of a scouting fault. But as you can see here. I'm already applying pressure at the five minute mark. So Warrior Scouts are upgraded, they're in his base, now forcing him off gold, meaning he's not going to be able to uh, build his eco advantage, and now he has to react. Because if I'm allowed to build up a, uh, a big military force, and he's not, he's just going to lose the game because he loses all map control and all of the momentum. So his eco advantage will not be paying off in time. He's going to have to make some units, so he makes Donsos. This is a natural counter unit. But the Warrior Scouts heal automatically, and they're also really fast, so you can micro your way around a Donso opening. Plus, small amounts of Donsos won't be able to take out your um, Warrior Scouts, so you'll need to about need about three to four uh, Spearmen slash Donsos to, to really deal with Warrior Scouts. I'm building a second pit mine here. He's only on his first pit mine, and this is something that I'm able to do because I'm applying early pressure. Because I have the advantage, 
of being in his base and him not even considering attacking me at the moment, I can build whatever I want to do in the base, like we talked about before, like a second TC, like a uh, pit mine um, expansion. He's going to keep on making uh, chaos here, so he's going to be focusing still on the eco part and then not all in on the Donso part, which is probably a mistake from his part, because if you're trying to deal with a rush like this, you really have to play methodically and secure your resources before you can keep on the eco expansion. And this is something you should think about as well if you're being attacked early on. The game goes on for a little while here, and there are things that we have to talk about. We have to make a good transition, we have to keep up the uh, harass. So as you can see here, I have multiple groups going back and forth in and, you know, from the sides. And we're always trying to find uh, small ways to hit our opponent here. We want to make uh, him as stressed as possible. We also want him to make mistakes. And so he's going to now overreact by making more production. He's made two stables. He's going to mass sofas. But sofas aren't as fast. And so... Even though his units might be higher quality, if I constantly keep the fight in his base by harassing him and forcing him to stay back instead of giving him the window to go to my base and start doing damage, what is going to happen is, even though he has a larger military force, he's forced to stay in the back because either he loses his villagers or he can try to go for an attack on my end and then I have to go back. So you have to think about that. Now, how do you, where do you go from here? You have your harassment force, but you can't really do much more than, than just this. Well, this is where the scaling part comes in. So if you're scaled well, meaning you've added a second TC or something like that, maybe you went for a fast castle. Here, I went for a pit mine. And so if you scaled well, you can now start to reap those benefits. We're only 10 minutes into the game, but these 10 minutes, we've only focused on his base. And so we have now built up uh, three safe pit mines here. We have... The second one here, the first one is over here, untouched. We have the third one coming up. And so when we go Castle Age, we're going to build a third one. We also have our own cows up. So even though he tried to go for an economic advantage, he's got the same amount of cows that we do, but he's also lost a villager. He's overreacted by making a lot of units. And whilst it's okay to have a lot of units for when you go Castle, I'd rather be in a position where I am the one that's aggressive because I'm the one that's dictating the game. That's the entire point of playing aggressively here. We're going to go for some upgrades. We're going to go for some uh, different um, production buildings here. So when we go to Castle Age, we can instantly make a lot of army because now he has outnumbered us and it's difficult for us to do a lot here. What we could have done is we could have continued making units in Feudal and then kept up the pressure. But because of his spawn here, with all of his resources in the back, it's really difficult to go and do a lot of aggro. So we decide instead to go for our own Castle Age. Also to get better units on our power spike. And then from there on out, we're just going to go with better units and then we're going to kill him. So we take some good fights here. Take out some units. He's going to try to do some macro, but he's already got done. So, so if you have archers here, you can do a lot of damage. He takes out a couple of houses, about 100 wood worth plus a pit mine. So not too bad for us. And then we have our towers already up here, which we can garrison in. I do lose a couple of villagers here, but overall, I'm still in a good position, though not as aggressive as before. And so one could perhaps uh, reevaluate and say, okay, you should have been more aggressive. Um, but then again, we're up against good players. And so sometimes the game swings. We keep going for some aggression here. Again, idle time on the gold villagers is really important. Here we hit the wood line and take out a lot of villagers. We've now taken out 12 villagers in this game, giving us about, yeah, well, how many villagers is that? About 10 villagers. Um, uh as an advantage here here we're trying to take a good fight by making the archers snipe the donsos we're also making our donsos take out the sofa so we're playing a pretty good composition in our base we still have units to defend and now we're just building up an eco advantage we're taking relics and then we're gonna finish the game pretty soon by playing momentum so we have map control and we have some different win conditions we could go for we could of course go sacred sites and put keeps all over the map but we want to finish the game before that so what's going to happen here is we're going to take a very important fight. He's playing only Sophus and Donsos here, but we're playing 1-1-1, one, 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 meaning we have Cavalry, we have Archers, and we have Spearmen. Because we have these different types of units, and he only has Donsos and Sophus, we're able to counter his units, but he's not able to counter all of our units. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to defend a little bit more until we get a proper military advantage. And then we're going to be going for our own push. So now he goes in. He takes some bad engagements. And now we can push him because we know what size of army he has. So here he's ready to defend. But we are actually also in a position where we have archers. So his Donsos won't actually be able to take a proper fight here. Fight goes down. We have veteran sofas. These guys have a lot of armor. We also have Donsos ourselves. So this is a fight where it could look pretty grim for us. If you just look at it from the outside because it's very equal. But we have the archers. <clears throat> and the archers will play a really big role in this fight here. So if you micro the archers onto the Donsos, then your own Donsos won't have to fight Donsos, and they can fight the cavalry instead. So you play by the counter system, and then that's going to help you uh, swing this fight into your favor, and this becomes a game-winning fight rather quickly. These fights can happen in Castle, Feudal, dark, in the Dark Age as well, if you're playing Mongol Mirrors. And so you're looking for this type of fight where you win the game. So this fight gives me such a huge military advantage, as you can see, 47 to 10. And this is the, where I can just start going crazy aggressive and then take out all the villagers. It's a lost game for him because it's, it's 5 to 1 outnumbered. So that's how you play aggressively. You adapt and respond and you secure the victory by taking a really good fight. If you can't crack open the shell, then you're instead going to go for keeps around their base and then you can move in with siege. And so if you already have the advantage and they're just turtling up, go for siege instead and finish the game. So yeah, that concludes it for uh, the acro play style. I hope I covered everything. If you have questions, of course, take a look down in the comment section and write me a comment. I'll uh, be happy to answer and uh, I'll see you on the Twitch or in the next video. Ciao.